Hello everyone. In this session, we are briefly going to discuss about the concepts of local connectivity and parameter sharing within convolutional neural networks. Earlier, we have understood about how the convolution operation is performed by making use of these filters or kernels. And the result of this particular convolution operation will be the feature maps as you are observing on the right hand side within this particular slide. Let's say that this is your input image data. And for filter, we are considering a square matrix, which typically is three by three in shape. So the values for this particular filter could be minus one, minus two, and minus one, zero, zero, and zero for row number two, one, two, and one for row number three. So this filter is convoluted onto different localized regions within your input image data. So as to extract the values pertinent to these feature map that you are looking on the right hand side. Since for this particular convolutional operation, all of these values or all of the pixel values that you are observing within the patch here are zeros. So the weighted sum is also going to be a value of zero as you can observe in the highlighted region in the feature map here. Okay. So what exactly is local connectivity here? So images, as we know, has a spatial structure that is the nearby pixels are more closely related than the distant pixels. That's what we know about, right? So local connectivity is going to allow CNNs to take advantage of this by focusing on local patterns in the data. By considering a column stride of one, you basically perform your next convolution operation on this particular image patch by using the same filter so as to extract the subsequent value of it. So this filter here is specialized in identifying the edges within a particular image, right? It's trying to identify the edges by moving this particular filter on different localized regions, no matter where exactly this particular edge is within the image. Doesn't matter about the location. It's using the same filter. So all the values within this particular filter are nothing but weights here. And there will be one bias term associated with every filter that you are having. Let's consider a particular hypothetical scenario where you are having your input image data, which is three-dimensional in nature. This is your input image data. And of course, within your convolutional layer, you basically have 10 3D kernels. And the result of this particular convolution operation of all of these kernels is going to be 10 different feature maps. So there are 10 different feature maps outputted. So the number of feature maps is completely determined based on the number of kernels that you are using within your convolution layer. Every kernel, every kernel is got its own bias associated. So there are 10 biases. And of course, let's consider that the 3D kernel is taking the shape of three by three by three. Then there will be 27 weights associated with every kernel. So 27 multiplied by 10 plus 10. So 270 plus 10. That's the resultant value is going to be 280 number of model parameters is what you can observe in this particular example that you're dealing with. Right. So whatever feature maps that you produce within your convolution layer as an output of your convolution layer, this can also act as an input to your subsequent convolution layer where you try to extract more complex features. The level of abstractness generally increases as we stack more and more convolution layers here. Okay. And the output feature maps from your convolution layer two basically will be fed as an input to your output layer here, not necessarily output layer. This could be a dense layer or a hidden layer. The output of dense layer can again be fed as an input to your output layer. So this here is in your input layer. Input layer basically holds this input image data that you are currently observing. So I believe you have pretty much understood what local connectivity is. So local connectivity basically tries to explain how closely these pixels within a particular localized region are related. So what are you trying to identify? You are trying to identify edges or patterns or textures or whatever it is. So we clearly understand what this local region is saying. So are we trying to identify, are we seeing any textures or are we seeing any edges within this particular localized region? So parameter sharing is one such key concept which we all should be aware of. So with parameter sharing, we're greatly reducing the overall number of learnable parameters here. Let's consider proper MLP model, multi-layer perceptron model, where the number of neurons within your input layer will be equivalent to the number of pixels within your input image data. So I clearly can see this is a six by six image data, right? There are 36 different uh, inputs that are present within your MLP architecture. If you're considering an MLP architecture, there are 36 different neurons or 36 different inputs. And now every neuron within your hidden layer 
So this is your hidden layer and every neuron within your hidden layer receives all of these 36 inputs. All of these 36 inputs, there will be all of these weights associated. W, I, J, K is going to be a weight matrix. Obviously, we are going to observe 36 different weights and we are computing this weighted sum by considering all of these inputs in the previous layer. Right. So at this particular value, whenever you are computing the Z value, it's going to be W transpose X plus B. So essentially the number of weights that you are considering is exploding. Let's say that you are considering 28 by 28. So the number of learnable parameters, the number of weights here is going to truly explode. So in case of CNN, you need not do that. So you basically consider the same kernel or same filter. Just try to slide over different local regions within your image data. You are going to make use of the same filter, right? You are sharing this particular filter across the different localized regions within your image. So that's a true benefit that you are getting out of it. So the number of learnable parameters is greatly reduced in combination. So when you combine the local connectivity and parameter sharing, the convolutional neural network models are very effective, right? They are very effective in a way that CNN model tends to focus on spatially close relationships in the image through local connectivity, while the parameter sharing also ensures that the same filter is being used across the whole image. Together, the combined effect, it reduces the number of parameters and allows CNNs to detect patterns regardless of the location within the image. It doesn't matter. Let's say that it's trying to identify a particular pattern in this particular region of the image, right? Let's say that we are trying to identify edges by using this particular Sobel filter, right? Irrespective of where the edge is present within the image, since you are using the same filter for all the convolution operations pertinent to that particular image, you might identify that edge anywhere within the image. Okay. So you are making sure that you are incorporating both spatial invariance as well as translational invariance using this approach. Okay. So I believe you have pretty much understood on what local connectivity is and what parameter sharing is. If you are looking at this particular slide, so all of these pixels are being used in your convolution operations to understand what values are in this highlighted region within your feature map. So this is a feature map output of your conv layer one, which can act as an input to your subsequent convolution layer. Now the convolution operation is being performed on this feature map extracted from conv layer one in your conv layer two. Whatever feature maps that you are looking at in all of these three different regions here, right? So the size of the feature map is decreasing as you move forward within the network. I believe it's pretty much clear on how you compute the size or shape of this feature map and all is what you already are aware of. Let's say that if your input image is 28 by 28, it denotes X and Y and your filter is of shape 3 by 3, this denotes M by N. And obviously the shape of your feature map is going to be X minus M plus 1 comma Y minus N plus 1. Obviously, it's going to turn out to have a value of 26 by 26, right? So this is a shape of feature map from your conv layer one. So this is another example, not this example that I'm considering. I'm in the example that I'm dealing with. I'm considering an input image of shape 28 by 28 here. Okay. And this here can act as an input to your subsequent layer, which is conv layer two. And if you're using the same three by three filter in your conv layer two also, then the resultant output of your feature map is going to be 26 minus 3 plus 1 comma 26 minus 3 plus 1 which is going to result in a value of 24 comma 24 okay that's how it goes through cool since you have fairly understood the concepts of local connectivity and parameter sharing what are the added advantages so one of the biggest advantage is that the number of learnable parameters are greatly reduced with parameter sharing since you are using the same filter for different localized regions within your image the combined effect of local connectivity and parameter sharing is going to help CNN greatly by not only understanding the close relationships within an image, since we are convoluting on different local regions within the image, but it also helps in terms of parameter sharing that you are reusing the same filter again and again, no matter where you are trying to identify your edge, regardless of the location within your image, you are trying to identify the edges with this parameter sharing concept. Okay. In the next session, we are going to deal with CNN architecture on a very detailed manner. So, so far, whatever CNN architecture that we have discussed is very naive. So let's deal with the CNN architecture much in a greater detail in the next session. Okay. So that's all in this particular session. And thanks for watching.